all right, I'm back. And I, I've drawn a picture that I think is reasonable. So we see this vertical trace where my y values are equal to zero gives me a positive parabola. And the other vertical trace where my x values are equal to zero gives me this downward sloping parabola. And it gives us this sort of folded and tilted sheet. This is a way to visualize this function. So all of that was just visualizing this function. Now let's think about the composition of this function with this path. Recall that the path itself was just a circle in the xy plane. I'm going to write that circle in, maybe I'm not going to write the circle in red just yet. Well, here's my circle in red in the xy plane. And when I evaluate it at these functional values, it's going to trace out a new path. And the functional value at any given point t, it's going to give me an output that lives on this plane. So when I plug in some point t, the output is going to be up on this sheet, on this parabola graph. And we notice that for each of our inputs, the input values, the domain of this, only lives on this circle. And so I'm plugging in values that give me points that go up along this curved surface. Oh, that's something that's hard to see. But essentially, it's the circle, and it's been twisted up so that it lives on the surface of this plane. And that's what the composition of this path with this function will give you. And in general, in order to find out the composition of, of a path with a function, you're going to have to sketch out what that path looks like in the xy plane, and then map it up onto whatever your surface looks like, given by the two-variable function. So the main topic, the reason why we wanted to talk about this, was to be able to talk about derivatives of the composition of functions with paths. And it's a pretty simple definition of a derivative. If I want to take, I'll write out the definition. The derivative of f of c of t in this case, we're taking the derivative with respect to t because that is our input variable. And we write that as the derivative of f of c of t dt. We're going to have to use chain rule. And it really is exactly what you think that you want it to be. It's going to be the derivative of the outside function, the derivative of our f function. But notice that with our f function, our inputs are now t's. So our f function, the derivative, we're going to represent as the gradient of f evaluated along the path c of t multiplied by or dotted with our path c of t. And we're going to represent our path as a vectored valued function. So the derivative of our inside function, sorry, c prime of t. So what does this mean for our example? So in our example, Recall that our f function was given by x squared minus y squared. So that means that the gradient of f is given by the vector 2x comma negative 2y. I'm going to have to take this gradient vector and evaluate it at c of t. So the gradient of f evaluated at c of t means that I'm plugging in my c of t function for my x and ry components. Recall that my c of t function was given by the cosine of t comma sine of t. So in this case, evaluating it where my x value is cosine t, I get a new vector 2 times the cosine of t comma negative 2 times the y component function, which in this case is sine of t. So that's this first chunk of my derivative. And I have to dot that with the derivative c prime of t, which is what I think it should be. It's the derivative of this, which is the derivative of cosine is negative sine of t, and the derivative of sine is cosine of t. So that means that when I take this derivative, it's going to be this part dotted with this part, and because you have your notes in front of you, I'm going to erase this. And I get 2 times the cosine of t, negative 2 sine of t, dotted with negative sine of t, 
cosine of t. And recall from our dot product that when I take this dot product, I should erase this because it's no longer the definition. The first components multiplied together are going to give me negative 2 cosine t sine t. And the second components multiplied together are going to give me negative 2 sine t, whoops, cosine t. And recall, this is a mistake that I make frequently, and so hopefully my mistakes will be helpful in you not making the mistakes. Dot products always give you an output that's a scalar. It never gives you an output that, it's, that is a vector. It's tempting to make these into vectors, but it's not. Really, this is negative 2 cosine t sine t minus 2 sine t cosine t. It's the exact same term twice, so this becomes negative 4 cosine t sine t is my derivative of the composition of this path with the function. So after talking about that path stuff, we're able to get to the meat of the really cool stuff for today. So we're going to define what it means to take the derivative of a function with respect to some vector v. Let's take a moment to recall what we've already talked about in terms of derivatives of a of two variable functions. So here's my two variable function f. And we've talked about taking derivatives with respect to x or with respect to y, where we hold either our x or our y constant, and we're looking at the slope of the tangent line of the trace of each of those respective things. So what does it mean to take a derivative with respect to some vector v? With respect to some vector v, we're essentially saying that if I'm at some point AB, and I want to know how much does my Z value change? What's my delta Z as I travel in some direction given by a vector V? So here's my vector V down my in two-dimensional space. And as I travel along, not a trace that's exactly keeping my X components constant, or keeping my y components constant, but instead some trace that follows this v value, I want to know what's my slope there. Essentially, pictorially, that's exactly what we're saying, and this is supposed to be my tangent line. And so my slope, my output, is going to be some real value. And we have a definition for this, a way to compute this. So our derivative with respect to v the notation is given by d of v, and we're going to evaluate that at f of a, b, where a, b is some point, and f is the function that we're talking about. Our definition is going to be the gradient of f evaluated at a, b, whoops, a, comma, b, dotted with our vector v. Now, why is this? This comes exactly from what we just saw with composition of paths. If instead of thinking of v as just a vector, suppose that we think of a path down here, just like we talked about before. Maybe I should use red, because that's the color that we used before. Color is important sometimes. Ah, that's not red. Oh no, tragedy. Wait a second. Here we go. Whew. So let's say that this is our path, c of t, down in the xy plane and I want to know what's going on right at the point A, B. Well, if I'm traveling along C of T, what is the vector V? My vector V that I was talking about, V, is exactly equal to the tangent vector of this path. And the tangent vector, if you recall, is given by the derivative of my path curve, C prime of T. So this is exactly what we think it was when we defined the derivative of the composition of paths. Hopefully that's a way not only to remember why this formula is what it is, but it's also a way to visualize what exactly is going on. That essentially, I'm thinking of this vector as the direction that I'm traveling in down in the xy plane. I map it up to where I am on my functional values, and I want to know how fast is my z changing as I change along this functional value. So before I do an example, I also want to um, 
define a very special derivative with respect to a unit vector. So we define, and I'll write definition, definition, a directional derivative, directional derivative, is the derivative of f of xy is the, sorry, derivative of f of xy with respect to a special vector u where u is a unit vector. So I can take any, I can take a derivative with respect to any vector that I want, but in order to be a directional derivative, I need to make sure that I'm taking this derivative with respect to a unit vector. And as you recall, it's really easy to note, I can change a vector v into a unit vector by dividing by the magnitude of that vector v. And this will spit out a vector that's a unit vector. So the reason why this is important, just like derivatives, um, partial derivatives, we're essentially saying our step size is a unit step size, a unit value of x. Notice, for all of this, um, this unit step size is now going to give me a, a real valued output. My outputs are never vectors. My outputs are always my derivative, which is essentially rise over run, meaning it's my change in z value in the direction of whatever direction I'm pointing in.